So the next, um, the next item on our agenda is uh, for the position of Assistant General Secretary. So the position of Assistant General Secretary, we have uh, two candidates for that. So con contesting for that position, we have Kike Masubi and we have Wale Okunri Boye. And both of them CFA uh, and I would like to quickly introduce the role, I'll just give you the uh, role itself, just introduce the role, and then we'd have five minutes each for each candidate to give their speech, just a general summary of their manifesto, and then we'll have 10 minutes. So what we're going to do with that question and answer is we're going to have 20 minutes of Q&A, and you can already start typing your Q&A maybe after their speeches, and then we'll do that 10 minutes together, and I'll moderate that. Uh, two minutes, each candidate will have two minutes to answer uh, questions, each question, and I'll time it so we can keep to time. So for the role of Assistant General Secretary. So the Assistant General Secretary shall perform the duties of the General Secretary in his or her absence and automatically become the General Secretary of the Society in the event of the General Secretary incapacity, resignation, removal, or death until such time as the board may convene a, to appoint a new general secretary. He or she shall have such other duties and powers as prescribed in the constitution, the articles of administration by the board of governors and to the board of trustees. So uh, as we like to say in Nigeria, right? When you hear death, you say, God forbid, right? But I mean, this is, this is just a structure of what I mean, we have to provide for every eventuality, but that that won't happen. But the Assistant General Secretary is has a serious and important role to play because I can tell you for free that the General Secretary's hands would be completely full. And uh, as we know, me volunteering as well as other members volunteering for positions, we always need volunteers. There's so much work to be done to move the society forward. So I would like to first of all give intro to Kike uh, Mesobi and also uh, Wale here. We'd hear from Kike first and then we'd hear from Wale for uh, just a few minutes max each and then we we'll jump into the Q&A. So Kike is an energetic consensus building member of the CFA Society Nigeria. She started her uh, service to the CFA Society as a member of the programming committee in 2016. In 2017, she was assigned committee chair of the programming committee and she has held that position since then. With the valuable contribution of her colleagues uh, in the committee uh, and the board of governors, CFA Society Nigeria, profile of the society in Nigeria by introducing and managing both recreational activities and thought leadership events. Kike has experience in portfolio management, research, performance reporting, stakeholder engagement, and product and business development. So that's Kike. And I just want to confirm that Kike is here. Are you here, Kike? Okay, Kike is here. I'm sure Kike is here. And uh, I'll, I'll just quickly introduce uh, Wale. Wale Okunri Boye. Oh, sorry, Wale. Sorry for modeling your name. Sorry. Okunri Boye. Yes, I should know that. By the way, my mom's Yoruba. If she, she would have told me what, what kind of thing, what am I doing with Dutch names? I should pronounce it properly. So Wale, Wale is an experienced investment professional with over nine years experience across equity research, macroeconomic research, investment strategy, and portfolio management. He began his career at ERM Investment Managers, where he provided sell-side uh, sell equity research uh, covering coverage across Nigerian financials, consumer uh, goods, and agriculture. Thereafter, he had a stint at EcoBank, where he was responsible for tracking development across fixed income uh, currency markets for 33 African countries. Presently, he works at Sigma Pensions, where he leads the investment strategy and portfolio management functions. So that's Wale. So we have Wale and Kike. I would like to hand over to Kike just to give a quick intro of what she plans to do in, in the role. Kike, are you here? Um, Kika, we can't hear you. If you're here, I can't hear you. Can someone confirm if Kika is? Kika was there, but I think she just dropped off. She's probably trying to log in again. 
Okay. Okay. If you don't mind to jump in, well, it's usually ladies first. That's why Kiki had to come first. So what? Okay, thank you very much. Good, good evening, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Wale Greenway, as I've been introduced, and I'm for the position of Assistant General Secretary. Um, the position, I believe, requires strong organizational skills uh, that whoever is, 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 is occupying the role. And I believe that over the last four years, I've had the privilege during my volunteer, uh, uh, my, my period of volunteering as a member of the University Relations Committee to uh, display these skills. Um, University Relations Committee, essentially, as the name implies, works to develop relationships with various universities. It's sort of like the outreach arm of the CFA site Nigeria to universities. And over the last four years, we have started the first universities research challenge in Nigeria. And we started from eight universities and we've been able to go it to 24 universities. I mean, that, that, that task it, it, it involves coordinating across different schools, students, lecturers, deans, uh, looking for subject companies, reaching out to companies to try to, 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 to agree to, to act as subject companies, developing relationships with members of the CFA society to act as graders, uh, mentors, industry mentors for the students, and generally putting together the event itself. So it generally stretched uh, each and every member of the team, and I think it, it provides me with very good experience in terms of organization. It's also helped me see a lot of the inner workings of the CFA um, society. Um, one thing I, I think I think I think that has helped is, is is how we have been able to see more students from that program transit into jobs in finance and just from the university research calendar. It always gives us joy. And I think one key thing that 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 that, that, that sort of is, is that we can all see that finance or generally as investment professionals in Nigeria we believe finance can be a force for good. And even though the, the position I'm running for is, is, is that the secretarial, um, like I said, involving a lot of organizational skills, I believe in, in addition to having excellent organizational skills, I believe it also provides a platform to uh, push our aspirations as a collective society. Our dream for the CFA society is to be an organization that leads the Nigerian profession, Nigerian investment landscape in terms of ethics and professional competence. And I think, um, my, my ideas or the, the ideas I believe uh, in achieving those goals, I think there are four things that we need to, to be successful. One is collaboration. One thing I, I, I think I've, I've gotten from the CFA society is there's a lot of institutes, there's a lot of opportunities out there that we can tap into as an Nigerian society within the global framework, within the global uh, CFA network. So I believe we, we, we can deepen our collaboration with that network by doing more things, not just university relations. There, there are things like research foundation that can benefit university lecturers in Nigeria. There's so many, so many uh, things that the CFA Institute globally has that we can tap into. And I believe I will try and ensure that as much as possible over the next four years, we push that frontier that we, we've raised in the last four years. We try and include more things, benefit more things from, from the wider CFA society. Um, I also believe in advocacy. I think the earlier speakers have talked about that. Um, CFA should continue to advocate for a society we want, building an environment we want. The Nigerian investment landscape belongs to all of us. So the bigger it gets, the better for, for us as, 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 as CFA and, and members. So therefore we continue to advocate for things, at, at, at promotion of ethical ideas, ethical values, and generally more professional uh, ethos in, in, this, in, the, in, in the wider landscape by meeting with regulators, generally companies, asset owners, asset managers, just to try and get them to to build a society that we can all look forward to. Thirdly is participation. Once you become a CFA member, it's easy to sort of become dormant. I think most people sort of can easily drift away to become dormant members. And, I, and I'm able to say this because in, 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 my, in my role as a, as a, as a university, we have to always look for mentors. And so I usually go on LinkedIn, try and find people. And a lot of them, sometimes they want to engage, sometimes they're busy. But what that's helped me is to realize is that the only way we can do that is to, the only way we can get people excited is to deepen their involvement and participation. And I believe we'll be able to, and I believe my, what I one thing I'll try and do is push for more member events, more member led events, top leadership series. Uh, also in addition to that is, I think the CF Society is made up of many young members. So more training events to help our young members get skills in, get jobs in, 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 in the finance industry. I think that's something that will be key. Lastly is uh, right. membership, growing our membership beyond just CFA charter holders. 
They have the investment foundation for non-finance professionals. They have conditions for universities continue to widen those. I think um, with this, we have an excellent opportunity. And I think I'll try and, if, if I'm elected, to try and push for these four things. I could have coined it as CAPM, not the capital asset pricing model, but just collaboration, advocacy, participation, membership. So help me God, thank you. Thank you very much, Wale. Thank you for that. Thanks a lot. That was very informational and thanks for reading that out. And I would like to invite Kike, so Kike to give her uh, overview of her manifesto. Kike, are you here now? Just a reminder for everybody, for this for the role of Assistant General Secretary, and we have Kike Mesubi now. We've just heard from Wale. Good evening, David. Hi, Kike. Good evening, everyone on the call. Just when I thought I've left my village people behind, my internet decided to go off at the very wrong hour. But I'm back up now. Um, I have five minutes to give my speech, and I start. Yes. Great leaders do not set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It is never about the role always about the goal, a quote by Lisa. My name is Kike Meshubi. I'm the current chairperson programming committee. With the support of the board of governors and my team, we organized groundbreaking events that attracted policymakers in the industry. I think two of them that resonate with me are the 2017 Charter Award Dinner and the 2018 Investment Conference. We also broadened the event of activities to include recreational events. Some of them include the five kilometer walk we had, the Easter family fun day. The fun day showcased um, hidden skills of some of our members. Until then, I didn't realize we had um, bakers amongst us. Um, we also had the themed end of year party. Um, and I was pretty surprised or happy that people came out to play the part, which suggests that members are happy and willing to embrace this non-academic side of them. Achieving all that feat required selfless service behind the scene. Strong level of attention to details, tenacity, interpersonal relationship, effective communication, and grit. I'm volunteering to serve in the position of Assistant General Secretary because I'm passionate about the mission of the society. I have the skills, the character traits critical to the role, which are strong attention to details, coordination, interpersonal relationship skills, amongst others. I demonstrated all of these traits during my tenure as chairperson programming committee. Why am I the person for the role? When I think of our mission to promote the highest standards of investment practice in Nigeria, and build a vibrant community for the interaction and professional development of our society. Two things resonate, advocacy and member value. To promote the highest standard requires influence with policymakers and regulators. Whilst advocacy is very key and important and the people who've come ahead of me have spoken about it, I'm looking at advocacy from a different perspective. Are some of these policy makers, charter holders or members? How well do we engage them? How can we actively engage members who are future policy makers, C-suite executives, or those who are near those positions? We should also not forget we live in a fast changing and dynamic world where the young professionals trying things different from what a lot of us uh, perceive as the norm. How well are we attracting those set of professionals? How well are we imbibing the ethos of the CFA society, which is ethics, into them? When we do all of this, advocacy becomes easier. How can we achieve some of these things? We can engage our C-suite members by providing a pool of talents. We can also collaborate and partner with them, create platforms where they can come and talk about their, where they can, platforms for them to speak. And those platforms also give them opportunity to showcase their products and services. For the younger investment professionals, we can equip them with soft skills, 
such as hands-on experience that they require to get a job in the industry or even excel in roles where they currently hold. For example, um, access to using Reuters or Bloomberg, or even creating gaming portfolio management tools for a few that they can use as reference or experience to get a foot into the industry. We can also create inside groups, groups of common interests, a book club, or a, blue, a group for asset managers, et cetera, all to foster networking. In conclusion, when we create member value, advocacy is assured, sponsorship is secured, and intensive, internship positions are guaranteed. I wish for your support to become the Assistant General Secretary of our society. Board Kike for member value, let's make a difference. Thank you. Excellent, excellent timekeeping. Thank you very much, Kike. Thank you for that. And thanks, Wally, as well. So everybody, I mean, the floor is open to the house. We could ask questions. Please do just type the questions in the chat, get them coming, and then we're going to ask the candidates for questions. So we're moving into the 10-minute phase, but really it's like 20 minutes where we're asking questions. I'm going to start off the first 10 minutes and bring in your questions. Um, so while they're bringing in questions, I think people are still typing their questions there. Um, what, what I would ask, I'll ask both candidates this, is simple, your first 100 days, right? The 100-day question, right? Uh, let's just assume you're going to focus on one thing. I know you've listed out a lot of very key things that are very important. So what is that one thing? And I want you to articulate how that one thing, what are, what are the ways you're going to kind of... Uh, Take that one thing forward and why that one thing? What's the impact that one thing is going to have? So what's that your one thing for the first 100 days? I'll start off with Wally and you have two minutes to answer that and the Kike can answer as well. So Wally. All right, uh, so for me, I think the first thing is um, a member is as, as I think as, T, as Kike said, member value. Uh, so for me, I think one thing would be two rather what I, what, I would, what I would focus on, it tries to improve membership participation in the society because it's very easy where young society for people to just get disconnected from it. So I think member, trying to get more members, part, uh, member, members participating in the society. And I think two key things I think come to the fore. Firstly, is to try and beyond just, so now you have your CFA charter. There are practical skills you need to learn in the, in the world of today. Things like data analytics, financial modeling, uh, th things like that. And I think trying to work with, uh, pushing to work with uh, our trainers, uh, we, have, we have so many new trainers in, in, in this area to, to, to offer discounted uh, training programs for young professionals in this area. I think that's something that, that, that we'd like to do. Another thing is, um, uh, in addition to that, in trying to get, get more member, members, that's because I believe a lot of our members are younger or, or very early in their careers. Uh, second thing on that, on that, on that trying to, to boost that is looking for a way to institute a, a sort of sorry, uh, sorry, a sort of thought leadership series with indiv distinguished individuals of repute, not just within the within the within the wider CFA network. I think one thing we can enjoy as a CFA society is we have this network of societies, not just in Nigeria, uh, across across uh, financial centers of, uh, or uh, major financial centers. And so we can sort of develop a, a, a program whereby we have a periodic uh, co uh, sessions with members. We can look across, look for societies outside of Nigeria, try and schedule sessions, online sessions with these individuals, whereby they can come, share their experiences, ideas, and things they have, particularly to members. I think in this in the virtual world we're living in, it, it, a lot of people will be interested to hear someone like this. Okay, um, time up. Time up, time up, time up. Thank you very much for that answer. Thanks, Wally, for that answer. Great, great, great. Thank you for that. And so time time is up, unfortunately. So would would you, um, Kike, if you could answer the same question? Sorry, Kike, you're on mute. Sorry, Kike, you're on mute. So let's, I'll just start your time now. Apologies. So um, first 100 days, I will go for the quick win, which is developing soft skills for the young investment professionals that we have. If you look at the demographic of the society right now, you'll see we have a lot of young members. And even going by the 
attendance or, or the couple of last virtual meetings we've had, we've had a lot more candidate members. Um, that clearly tells you that they want something more than just the technical skills the CFA gives to them. How can I get an how can I get a job in the investment industry? And to get a job, you need to differentiate yourself with both your technical and soft skills. So a quick one that I believe we can do in the first hundred is probably plan a Bloomberg program for them across different um, asset classes. Um, the reason I have chose that as a quick win is the other target group, uh, the C-suites, but again, they're quite, um, they are busy, so it's, it's difficult to get hold of them, but um, the first hundred days will be focused on the young investment professionals, candidates, again, showcasing the value of being a member to them. Thank you. Right. Super. Thank you very much for that, Kike. Thanks for that. Now I'll just move to the house and just ask questions around. Uh, we have a question from Banji. Banji is asking for the assistant secretary. Uh, the assistant general secretary will also act as the secretary of the board of trustees. Can the two candidates please let us know how they will get the trustees more involved in the affairs of the society? Uh, so I'll start off with Kike this time, and it's, I'll just give you one minute for this, so not two. How would you get the trustees more involved in the affairs of the society? What's your strategy? Banji allowed to ask questions. <laughs> Banji is a member, so he's allowed. <laughs> so I think this is... In his capacity as a member. <laughs> This is a strategy pro where you have to, and that has to do with communication. Um, communication because you have access to the board of trustees. And so it's strategy because you have to be able to convey the thoughts of the members to the board of trustees and vice versa. So a lot of this will be dependent on inter um, relationship as well as diplomacy to ensure that the concerns of the members are, are aired appropriately and the Board of Trustees are able to take actions to implement some of them. Okay, super, thanks Thanks for that. And uh, Wally? Yeah, so uh, I think for, for our Board of Trustees, I think one thing I think we'll, we'll try and do a bit more is communication and um, building that sort of rapport with them or creating a session, creating more regular interactive sections between ourselves and members of the board such that I think I think I think that that's perhaps a way to go about it so that we, if we have more interactive sessions with them or we'll create more formal sessions where we can discuss on key issues or key goals or agendas, I think and also try and but those those sessions would create an avenue whereby we bring what the people are more, more, more pe people within the rank and file are saying and and sort of bring it to their attention, I think. So I think having more regular sessions, more formal regular sessions with them to discuss issues that we think are pertinent to the society, to members. I think if we can sound those issues out, if we can make, make that have any sort of like a sounding board, I think that we will be able to build a bit more rapport with them. With them. All right, super. All right. Thanks for that answer, right on time. Thank you. Um, I have a question here from Ife Olua. Uh, if is asking in both candidates, effective networking, not just an exchange of business cards amongst members, is actually one of the key areas and touch points where value is created for members. How do the aspirants intend to facilitate this? So can I start with Wally? Okay, on, on this wise, I think it's, it's, it's again, creating more more member events, more member events, particularly events that are sort of seen or, or so we, we try and bring in members who are, so, so I think I think for a lot of members, like I say, as, as we said, who are younger down or just starting their careers early on. If we have more member-led events, so members who are people want to see or people want to hear, hear about, we can bring those members to lead events. This will provide a, a, an avenue for individuals at for, you, for individuals who want to meet people. So, for example, if we bring, say, someone like the MD of Citibank or the MD of Sigma Pensions to come and hold a member event, I think if, if we do that, we bring we, that will help build that kind of rapport, build, build, create an avenue where individuals can meet, discuss, particularly on pertinent issues and exchange ideas. I think that's one way by which we can 
we can get those uh, those conversations going. And then also another thing is to try and create more mentorship or sort of a, a mentorship forum whereby we can uh, create an avenue by where individuals who are highly experienced can meet and sort of mentor individuals who are still up and coming in their career. I think if we can have those kind of two things so that they are they are responsible or sort of seem to help lead these these these, these people who are still having their career for that. I think that could also create right. more 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 opportunities. Thanks for that, Wally. Thanks for that. I, I give one minute, just about one minute. Thank you. Kike, would you like to add to this? So networking is not about exchanging cuts. I have Bola Adishala's phone number. And I bet you if I call her today, she's not going to pick my call because she doesn't know who I am. What am I trying to say? I think we should create inside groups, smaller groups of common interests. A book club, for example. If I belong to a book club, with Bola Adeshola, she will know who I am. So in addition to having this broader society, um, committees, programming, um, employers, relations, et cetera, we should also think of smaller groups of common interests. Um, do, we have peop- do we have fixed income traders? Let's create a fixed income group where both the younger ones and the older ones can interact. An asset management group. So that would be my own approach to ensure that we um, networking is en- enriched, or we, de- we, we 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 enjoy the value of networking by coming together as a group. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'll just add some follow-up questions on that. So I'll just paraphrase. So Wally, uh, things we do more member events. You have more member events. Get some really interesting people that can kind of join, and then um, invite some real top person that can come and share experiences. And during those member events, we have network. Network and networking happens. Obviously, we're living in a post-COVID world, right? So Wally, how would that happen? I mean, this digital age we live in. You know, I don't know. What, how would that? How do you manage that? I think so. Uh, in, in again, the fact that it's digital, I think even means means we we have a, a, very, a very good example is is with Clubhouse, for example, where it sort of level the world, whereby you're speaking directly with individuals who are higher up, and you have sort of access to them in a digital world. So I think it's it's it, it even means we have more opportunities to sort of to sort of do things like that, whereby we have small sessions, small groups like. Kike talked about where we can discuss uh, pertinent ideas or topical ideas, exchange, exchange, and um, exchange viewpoints and, and things with, with people who are seen a, or different people. So you can bring a, a different pe- different members of the society into a group, into a small uh, a digital uh, group, say clubhouse, for example, or, uh, or or Zoom sessions, whereby we just have small groups of, of individuals exchanging topical ideas. Listening to listening to people talk about ideas, I think, I think if if, right. if, 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 if we create more of those forums, those kinds of events, yeah. Great, great, more. great. Thanks for that. I would like to go into Kike. You mentioned small groups of common interest. I mean, I like that small groups of common interest. So, is that currently existing, or uh, if it's not, how do you intend to start that? What what's what's your approach? Because it sounds good, but how are we going to start that? We currently don't have that. Um, again, we would have to start small, and then based on our learnings on those ones, we can then um, create more groups. But off the top of my head, it's just obviously we would work with the. Um, would I agree as a as board of governors and working with the society office how to implement it? Implement it. But off the top of my head, it would just be a couple of groups with common interests. So for example, I may be a portfolio manager today, but I have interest in learning about risk management or financial modeling. So we'll create a group. Obviously there'll be um, group leaders who will coordinate those events. And then we'll have members, there'll there'll be a formal process for members who are interested in joining certain categories to um, register interest. And the lead will be the ones who will coordinate the activities amongst them again. The beauty about the CFA Institute as well as the CFA Society in Nigeria is not rule based. It's really creating value and um, enhancing or learning, improving learning. So it's it's really the, the most important thing is creating a group where people can come together and learn about common interests. The modalities of how and how it will work, I guess, can be refined with time. 
Thanks for that, Kike. Thanks for that. The next question is for Wale. So Wale, you have actually two questions. I'll try and combine them. So I know what well, question, this question is from Oluyomi. Uh, Wale, I know you've done well as a member of the University Relations Committee. In terms of publicity, do you think we can achieve something close to the BB Niger uh, for the research challenge? Because I think more people need to know about it. Uh, yes, yes. I mean, I think I think um, the sky is the limit for for research challenge. As I said, we started with eight universities. We're going to twenty four. Um, within universities, I think it's it sort of become almost a, a particular use in some universities, they do competitions to try and pick members. So I think in terms of publicity, I think maybe yes, we, we can do a bit more there to try and push the event, uh, push push it, give it give it more prominence. And I think it's already getting getting to that level with with the universities today. I mean, we 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 start, I say we start with eight. We always have every year universities calling you that they want to to be a part of it. So I think. What we can do is the plan generally is to try and move away from 24 and try and get maybe more regional events, one in the southwest, so because you have a lot of universities in Nigeria. So yes, I do think we can do more to push push for more publicity, um, get more members also involved as mentors to to teams as well, and then also sort, sort of try and get a buy-in for the schools as well, because as they as they as they as they are participating in this commission, they also get some some form of promotion as well because. If their school wins or they do very well, if they are, if the school gets the benefit of that. So I think, yes, there's more we can do in terms of, in terms of publicity. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that, Wale. Uh, uh, quick question as well. You mentioned something about mentorship. This question is from Monzali. Mention, mentioned about mentorship. Is there an existing program? If not, what ideas do you have about it, please? Uh, what membership mentorship? Not that I'm not aware there's a, a specific program now for mentorship, but I think it's it's something it's an idea we can we can sort of have uh, whereby we 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 can start we can start small with a, a team of mentors, individ, uh, experienced individuals who have uh, opportunity to pick young and upcoming uh, CFA charter members. Um, I think I think starting small and phasing it over a period of time uh, and, and, and I think it's something we can we can we can start off with. But okay. For, for Thanks, now, we Thanks have, Lawale. Uh, we don't have now, but it's something that we can really uh, have that as a bad boy that we should, should start. I think it's, a, it's an interesting and great idea. Uh, question for Kike, also Wale can chip in. What do you intend to do uh, specifically for foreign non-Nigerian members with respect to networking? Um, there are some members that are not uh, non-Nigerian members. So what do, what do you intend to do? They're based abroad. Yeah, I'm not clear on the question. The question was, uh, what do you intend to do specifically for foreign non-Nigerian members with respect to networking? Now, I'm guessing the question was from Theod Theodore, Theodomo. I'm not sure if this is foreign as in based in Ni abroad uh, and they're Ni members of CFA Nigeria or they are foreigners that are not Nigerian that are members of CFA Nigeria. Maybe you'd have to clarify the question truly. But you can do either or. You can answer either or. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Um, so if I think of West Africa, for example, now, I think it's just Nigeria and Ghana that have um, local societies. So that immediately creates a platform for collaboration. And it's a win-win for both of us. Um, those of us in Nigeria can also learn from what's happening in the West African countries and vice versa. Um, I think, again, something else that quickly jumps to mind is um, job creation or av av availability to transport your skills from Nigeria to Africa. So, for example, if we had the Ivory Coast um, CFA charter holders as part of the larger group, we're also able to exchange ideas in terms of the jobs available in their region and, um, and ours. I hope that helps. Yes, and uh, Theodore, Theodore Moore is actually in Cote d'Ivoire, from Cote d'Ivoire, so he's a member from Cote d'Ivoire, but a member of CFA Nigeria. So, so that's that's great. So, um, this yeah. creates a sense of um, belonging and having a family, people of yes. common interests. So, certainly, 
something to work towards. Yes, and I don't mind having an event in Cote d'Ivoire. I mean, if Theodora could manage it and we can fly down, mm-hmm. why not? Why not? Let's do something like that. That would be great. So, yes, uh, and Maybe more questions, you. please. <laughs> yeah, Wale, go ahead. Okay, okay. So I, I think I think one, one, one idea we can do is to create, say, uh, if the world is flat with, 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 with the virtual world we live in. So we can create um, virtual events whereby we have uh, speak joint panels between uh, speakers from Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, and to talk on issues that we think, broad issues that we think are, are common across and ideas or experiences, we can sort of create these regular panels or, 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 or sessions whereby we create a regular panel, say once every quarter or something, whereby we speak to individuals from, whereby we put individuals from Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana on a panel together with Nigerians and we brainstorm and share ideas on, on developments across uh, financial systems and ideas that we think we can we can sort of use to push forward. I think those panels could serve as events, or we could also, maybe it could be an event where we have a speaker from the Nigeria, could go Ghana, come and speak on an issue. And um, I think I think that could provide opportunities for for more um, mixing of ideas. And I think that that could be that could be a, that could be a very good idea for Metro. All right, super. All right, super. Thank you very much for the contributions. Thanks, Kike. Thanks, Wale. What I'll do is I'll give you guys the last, like, two more minutes, two minutes each to see if you could uh, conclude or just give us your closing thoughts on the role and uh, everything else you want to say. Just give you two minutes, just two more minutes to just say something, and then we're going to close this part of the, of the presentation. I'll start with Kike. Um... So in, in conclusion, um, the society has done a lot in the last four years and we're at a critical stage of ensuring that we um, we frog on the success of the last society um, by deepening our relationship with the industry. Again, um, my approach to, or my contribution to that will be addressing the issue at the grassroots building relationship with people who can influence decisions to help us move in the direction which the CFA is really key about and which is about promoting the investment industry. So um, vote me and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kike. And over to you, Wally. Yeah, thank you. I think we have a wonderful and unique opportunity to establish it. A society, a society that is at the forefront of the Nigerian investment landscape, one that everybody respects and, 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 and values. And I think it will take a hard work, a courage, a stubborn, a stubborn, a stubborn chase of your, of your purpose. And I think we have all those values as a society amongst our members. I think um, the, 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 la- the, the last four years, uh, the, the, the current board of governors have been able to, to take that torch much, much further from where they, where they picked it up. And I think for the next batch, for the next batch of uh, leaders, I think we can do this together as well. Thank you. All right, super. All right, so super. thank you, thank you very much. Thanks a lot to Wale. Uh, I mean, we do a virtual virtual clap to Wale and virtual clap to Kike. Thank you very much for the contributions, and also I'd like to say thank you to Bank uh, for uh, for Lake for Lake Bank Ole, uh, for uh, for the position of treasurer and Musa Ibrahim for um, general secretary. So just to remind everybody, so the elections I believe are on the twelfth uh, twelfth of uh, this month, and everybody should vote. I think from. 12 midnight to 12 midnight, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, please make sure we vote. I mean, this is such a landmark event in the growth of the society. I can remember from the starting point of trying to get how many people can we get together to start a society in Nigeria. It took a long time. And the society has really grown. And now moving to the next level is big ideas that we want really for the society. Speaking as a member, I know is, is really big and bold ideas. And it's really big and bold ideas that got us to where we are. I would like to say a big thank you to the outgoing um, Exco. I mean, it's, it's such a wonderful thing what they've done, what they've grown. The foundations are strong and we, we need leadership to really move it forward to the next level. And uh, I'm not saying the next level because, I mean, we know other people have used that word. I really mean it to moving us to the next level. So um, I would like to kind of introduce what's going to happen tomorrow. So tomorrow, starting at 10 o'clock, we have the welcome address by the BOG, five minutes. And then from there, we're now going to have to move into the, uh, I'll give you a recap of 
they won. And then we'll go into the vice presidential uh, candidate speeches, hear from them. We have three candidates. We have Chuka, we have Odiri, and we have um, Olumuyua. And then we also have um, the vice presidential position as well, Q&A. We we'll do the Q&A for VP position. And then we now talk about the candidates for president after that, which we have Ibuku and Ola for the candidates of president. We have their speeches. We will also have Q&A. And we hope to finish that session tomorrow at around 11.35. So it starts at 10 o'clock, ends at 11.35. So hopefully everybody will join. Uh, details will be communicated to all members as well by email. And it's basically going to be electronic voting, obviously, electronic voting. You don't need to come with your mask and stuff. No social distancing required there. So really no excuse as well, right? It's electronic voting. You click. I mean, you should be able to have two minutes to click, right? So it would be really good for us to have full turnout, uh, both Democratic and Republican and also independent. Please turn out and vote. The key thing is your vote will definitely count and we should vote and move our society forward. Volunteering as well, even after the elections and everything, I would encourage members to volunteer. It, 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 it takes a lot to volunteer. You need to volunteer and, and just contribute your, your one hour, contribute your one hour a week. And it will really help you. Volunteering actually makes you better. Let me give you a secret. If there's something you really want to fix, there's something maybe you really want to polish very well, just volunteer for that thing in the society. Pick that thing. If it's portfolio management, whatever events is there, say you want to start a group for portfolio management or stuff, and then you will get better. So it's not just altruistic. You will get something out of it. So I'd like to say thank you to everybody in the secretariat. I will call them secretariat now. I'd like to say thank you to Frank, Gloria, and everybody else that made this happen. Yeah, me. And I'll say thank you to Banji as well. Uh, thanks, everybody. And we're going to see you tomorrow. So tomorrow at 10 o'clock, please make sure you join. Uh, obviously, there's still social distancing. You're not going to any O and Bear party on Saturday, 10 o'clock. Please make sure you're here online and listen to our candidates and hear what they have to say. And most importantly, make sure you vote. Thank you very much, everybody. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, David. Thank you.